Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. So we're going to look at the upcoming games this week. There are some nice titles actually. There are the usual Sea of Detritus, but there are also a few gems in here. If you enjoy the channel or you're a regular, please do hit that bell icon so that you stay up to date with our latest videos. So let's jump into the list. First up is a very small title called Cosmonauta. It's only 89p, which is a bit of a bargain. You can pre-order this now. It has 64 levels and is inspired by the classics from the 8-bit and 16-bit era. Now, I know for a fact Glenn will be sitting here going, that's exactly like probably something like, I don't know, Jet Set Willy. But I don't have a brain like he does where he remembers every single 8-bit game that was ever created. All I know is it's very fun to play. I've had a little go on this one. They sent a few codes over and we'll be giving away a few of these as well because, well, why not? But for 18 9p might be worth keeping your eye on. Following swiftly on then we have Dead Cells the Bad Seed Bundle from Motion Twin. Now strangely they made this so that if you bought it you couldn't actually play the original game until it unlocks which is just so odd seeing as the original has been out for almost a year. Regardless the Dead Seed Bundle is excellent now i mean um that's an unofficial opinion although i have been playing quite a bit of it you'll be able to play through the dilapidated arboretum a relaxing and peaceful greenhouse inhabited by a peaceful clan of mushrooms with an understandable desire to murder the beheaded then there's the morass of the banished a noxious environment ruled by a band of tree dwelling mutants with pointy sticks sneaky darts shooting frogmen and a bunch of deadly bloodsuckers and finally, the nest, which is a domain of Mama Tick. Now, the two new levels, as it states on the eShop, are alternatives to the promenade and toxic sewer levels from the original, and the ramparts, osiery, and ancient sewers, with the boss designed to be on par with the concierge. Man, that one took me a while originally. If you've been holding out on dead cells, stop holding out on dead cells. Just buy it. I promise you, you'll like it. I think I can say that. Next up, we've got another small adventure from Annapurna Interactive called Florence. It describes itself as a story of love and life. At 25, Florence Yo feels a little stuck. Her life is an endless routine of work, sleep, and spending too much time on social media, said everyone in 2020. Then one day she meets a cello player named Krish, who changes everything about how she sees the world. I love little adventure titles, and this looks brilliant. Seriously though, if it wasn't from Annapurna Interactive, I probably wouldn't have given this the time of day. But those guys have such a pedigree of creating and nurturing fine adventure titles and just publishing some real gems on the Switch. So I would say at £5, dropping on the 13th, this might be worth having a look at. The next one's Glass Masquerade 2 Illusions. Now, I played the original Glass from Digirati way back when, but unfortunately we didn't get to cover it on the channel. Now, it's a very strange premise indeed. You're piecing together stained glass windows. It's essentially just a puzzle game, but the music's lovely and it's super chilled out. I was talking the other day about how there are some really nice, relaxing games on the Switch. This is one of them, if it's anything like the first title. There are 30 puzzles to complete, and the stained glass images themselves are based on 20th century surrealism. If art is your thing but for me the real selling point here is the original soundtrack from composer Nikita Savalnev definitely a game to chill to Under Hero from Digirati got my attention just on its unique premise alone. The main hero of the game has uh, died and failed miserably, so an underling of the evil king reluctantly decides to take his place. It's a classic side-scrolling RPG adventure with all the jumping, slashing and, well, all that stuff you'd expect. But you can also bribe people and the combat is turn-based, which is a touch odd because it's turn-based without the turns. It's all about precisely timing your actions, so in a way I guess it's more rhythm-based. There's also another lovely original soundtrack on this one. If you like these types of games and especially ones with a dark humour inserted, this might be one to look at when it drops on the 13th.
One for Glenn then, definitely, definitely not for me, is Rise of Insanity from Pineapple Works. It's a first person psychological horror game. What I will say is the performance is excellent. We've been playing a little bit this one already and the visuals are also nice and crispy. It's set in America in the 1970s. The story centers around Dr. Stephen Dowell, a renowned psychologist faced with a difficult patient who shows distinct yet contradictory symptoms of different mental disorders. But not only that, your own identity as well as your own story are shrouded in mystery and you'll gradually uncover those as you play through the game. The standout for me so far on this one is that distinctly 1970s aesthetic that everything has. It's got a good amount of character this one. I think this is gonna be for fans of this genre. It drops on the 13th as well. Experimental methods. Only experimental. <laughs> Honey, can you get the towel from the bedroom? Following on from that, we've got Goblin Sword from Gelato Games. We see so many of these, don't we? So, so many of this style of game. But I have to say, at £4.49 and with the beautiful artwork that we can clearly see in the trailer, this one has already sold me. I'm going to be picking this one up. It's got 89 levels, 13 bosses, 30 different weapons, 30 relics, 14 different costumes, and there are 8 guardian pet type things that follow you around, as well as 5 secret levels. The developers put a ton of time into this one but to make themselves stand out from the sea of other games on the eShop they've had to price themselves very very low and if the trailer's anything to go by I'd say this was worth it. We'll make sure we get some copies and have a go and let you know for sure but yeah keep your eye on this one it drops on the 13th. The kingdom is called Tutti Fruity, the game is called Snackwell, the Dungeon Crawl Gold, and it drops on the 14th. Now, this is essentially Diablo, but with very cutesy graphics. You can design and create your own character, hop online with three other friends for four player co-op, and there's tons of loot to grind your way through, as well as some boss fights, and everything else you'd expect from this type of game. It looks like a whole lot of fun, but also a title that you could sink so many hours into. There are hundreds of different weapons and items to find. If you've got a particular penchant for dungeon crawlers, I have a sneaking suspicion this one's gonna be a world of fun. The penultimate game is Read Remastered from Metalika Games. They always produce or publish really simplistic platform games, but they're actually quite nice and they're always very cheap. This is probably my favourite one I've seen in a while from these guys. In a way, it looks like a coloured in version of Gatto Rabato with very similar looking controls. The premise is equally simple, you just have to collect cubes to complete the stage, of which there are 50. If you're on for something a bit more mindless, but with a good amount of challenge, then keep your eye out for this one when it drops next week. Without a doubt, the most exciting title coming next week is Darksiders Genesis from THQ Nordic. This top-down action adventure is another this week that follows many of the Diablo 3 traits. Everything you see takes place before the events of the first Darksiders game, which is interesting, and it's also the first title in the series to introduce Strife, the fourth Horseman of the Apocalypse. As you'd expect, there's co-op gameplay, but perhaps a little disappointing is that you can only play with two people, and that's locally, online, or through local wireless. That might hurt it in the long run, I think. Perhaps not the correct decision. We would have definitely hoped to have seen one to four player online and local play. Still, I'm glad they put the couch co-op mode in there, and there's no doubting the game does look really fun. It also drops on the 14th.
So there we have it for next week. There are some other titles coming as well. Mm, they just didn't quite make the cut this time around. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that little bell thing so that you catch the next one. And as always, a big thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and to all of you who leave comments down below. We really do appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!